Hello, welcome to my YouTube. Uh, this is my first video, and today I'm going to do a pretty extensive garden tour. So let's see what we have out here. So from right here, you can kind of see what we have going on. Let me explain um, the situation. So we live in a small city and this is our backyard. So as you can see, it's not huge. Um, basically what I have done over the last few years is this has steadily gotten bigger and this year is the biggest it's been. So I'm gonna have to back up to show it all to you. So this is how big it is. It's 12 feet wide by 24 feet long, I think, if I remember correctly. And what I have is I'm using cattle panels. If you can see, there's four cattle panels um, to make two sets of trellises to encourage vertical gardening. And then I have a bunny problem, so I have to have fencing. Um, I have a two foot fence all the way around. And then I have this gate here that makes it easier to get in and out of. This is the first year of this, so this is all an experiment. I don't, I will never say that I'm an experienced gardener because sometimes I just don't know what I'm doing. I watch a lot of YouTube videos <laughs> and I read a lot of things online to learn about the various, you know, things I'm growing. So right now I'm gonna take you on an extensive garden tour of everything I have out here. And in the description down below, I will put a list of all the plants and varieties that I have out here right now. So let's go in. The first thing in the garden, right here off the bat, is my herb area. Um, I have a couple different types of basil. This is called lime basil, and it, it smells so good. Um, I haven't harvested any yet, but I have heard that it's delicious in water, so that's what I'm going to be doing with that. This was a very big impulse buy. I was not going to get any more plants, and then I saw this and I had to have it. Um, over here is just a regular uh, big leaf basil. I, I can't remember exactly the variety, but I will put that in the description below. And then down here is dill. And I started this um, a few weeks ago, and then I just started this a few days ago. And so it's starting to come up and it looks good. Um, I make a lot of pickles from the garden and so having dill available on hand is very convenient. And then I have two different types of lavender back here and I also have a little rosemary bush. So the herbs I have out here, uh, a lot of them came from stores as seedlings. My goal this year was to grow most everything from seed but uh, my lavender and my rosemary did not germinate. So. I bought seedlings and that's okay and that's what I've always done in the past this was the first year I've ever done uh, seeds I've never grown anything from seed really before so I'm pretty proud of the fact that most of the stuff out here came from seed these are onions uh, these are red yellow and white onions and these have been in the ground for I don't know probably about a month and a half. I think I planted them in the beginning of May. Um, and they're tall and spindly right now and they look pretty good. Uh, I've never done onions before. So, you know, I don't really know what I'm doing, but again, like I said, <laughs> I've been watching YouTube videos and reading articles and learning. Uh, over here next to this trellis is all marigolds. And I planted all of these from seed. So these were all seeds that I just threw out here and they are coming up um, and they look very happy. They have buds on them. They should bloom pretty soon, which is exciting. Down here are my strawberries, my little tiny strawberry patch. And uh, this right here and this right here are last year's plants that I actually had to transplant from a different spot in the garden. Um, and then these two bigger plants are ones I bought as seedlings this year. Down here is the pepper area, and I have four types of peppers, I believe. Uh, this is a Serrano. These three are just California Wonders, I think. Um, maybe these are California Wonders. I have California Wonders out here somewhere. These I bought 
as seedlings. These I grew as seeds. And then back here, I have two jalapeno plants right there. And then that little guy right there. And his leaves are looking a little funky, but he looks healthy. So I'm going to leave him alone for now. This down here is my determinate tomato area. So there's two types of tomatoes. There's determinate and there's indeterminate. What's the difference? Determinate tomatoes grow into like a bush. Um, they don't really grow long branches. They kind of grow into like a more bush shape and you do not prune them because that inhibits tomato growth. Um, determinate tomatoes, the ones that I have out here this year are Roma and Viva Italia. Um, and those are sauce tomatoes. So they have a lot of meaty uh, fruit on the inside and less seeds, which is good for making sauce, which is what I uh, have been doing with it. That's what I did last year. And that's what I'm going to do again this year. So this first row over here, these are all Romas. And this row right here, these are all Viva Italia's. Viva Italia is um, just another type of determinate tomato. And so these I all started from seed and they are finally starting to look like something. Um, they were struggling for a bit. They needed some phosphorus when I put them in the ground, and so I kind of watched them, but they look pretty happy now. They've grown a lot, which makes me very happy. Um, these two little Romas right here have only been in the ground for probably two weeks. I waited on these to put them in because they needed to be hardened off for a little longer, but they're starting to get new leaves, which is very exciting. And you'll see all around there are just rows of marigolds. Um, I got a bunch of marigolds on clearance at Lowe's a few weeks ago and planted them all because they are a good pest repellent. Back here, these little guys, these are a type of sunflower. These are like a dark red sunflower. And like I said, I'll put the exact name in the description below, but these will get about six feet tall and they'll be a good um, anchoring piece for the back corner of the garden. And then if we turn around, we see the back of the tomato trellis. Can you grow tomatoes up a trellis? I think the answer is yes. Have I ever done it before? No, but I have seen people do it. And so I decided to give it a try. Um, I have indeterminate tomatoes on my trellis. So that means they will grow very tall with long vines and branches, which means they need to be pruned to prevent disease. So in this tomato trellis, one, there are many weeds. I did come out here and weed this morning, but I didn't get them all because it's a constant battle. These two are much smaller than the rest because they went in late. Um, these are Cherokee purples, both of these. These are both Cherokee purples and I have never grown these before. I've actually never grown any of these tomatoes in here before. Um, they are a purple variety of tomato, and these are ones I started from seed. And again, when I planted these, they were needing a little bit of phosphorus, and now they look so happy and healthy, and that makes me happy. This down here is a long keeper tomato. Now, these next four plants were given to me by my friend Katie who grew these from seed herself and had too many. So we did a little trade trade and that's how I ended up with some of these plants. So what I've been doing this year, and I don't know if this is gonna work or if it's gonna help or not, but I've been doing it. Um, I've seen that people have been trying to self pollinate their tomato flowers by just tapping them. So I've been coming out here and just tapping everything when I come out. So this is another tomato. This is just a red, regular red tomato. This down here is a San Marzano. Now, you may have heard about San Marzanos before. You can buy them at the grocery store. Sometimes you can buy them in a can and they're very good for sauce. As you can see, there are some little baby tomatoes on here. There's three little babies on here. And these are more of like an elongated shape. Um, they're less round. They're more like a Roma, if you've ever seen a Roma. But what's interesting about them is they are an indeterminate. So they will grow up this trellis. And by grow up, I mean they'll grow up and I will tie it up. So um, 
as you can see I have it tied to the trellis to keep it standing up correctly um, because it was starting to lean a little bit across from the San Marzano we have some more marigolds and these are called uh, French marigolds I think they're apparently a different variety again they were on Clarence at Lowe's um, this is a purple Russian tomato and it looks terrible but I promise it's happy um, I don't really know <laughs> why it looks like this but this is just the characteristic of this plant I think so the leaves are very curly um, this plant has not had anything different more or less of anything else but as you can see the leaves are so curly and the branches are so spindly and weird um, but you will notice there is a baby tomato on here which is very exciting actually there's two there's one over here as well so again I'm just gonna tap 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 um, and this plant has been tied up quite a bit. So it's tied up here. Um, it's tied up right there. Uh, it's tied up. Actually, I think it's only two spots right now. So what I'm going to be doing as things get bigger is I'm going to cut off all the branches that are below this first rung of this trellis. So for example, this branch I'm going to cut off. Um, I may cut this off as well because it's starting to hit the ground and you don't want your tomatoes to touch the ground. It increases the risk of disease. So that's something to keep in mind when growing tomatoes. It doesn't matter what kind, determinate or indeterminate, you don't want them to touch the ground like this. Because as, as you can see, there are some little spots on this leaf. And so that, deter that to me says this leaf is starting to get disease. So this branch needs to come off as soon as it can. And at this point, I could probably cut that off. So I actually have my little handy dandy shears out here with me. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to cut this branch off. I'm just gonna cut it off right at the trunk. So this branch over here, I said this one was gonna come off, but it's not touching the ground right now. It's on the trellis. So I'm gonna leave that one for a few more days. Let this plant get a little bit taller, grow some more leaves, and then I'll come back out and cut it off. But as you can tell, this plant is a lot taller than the other tomatoes. And I'm not sure why that is, but it does not have as many leaves. So you can kind of see right through it. Whereas this San Marzano, you can't really see through because the leaves are big and open unlike this. <laughs> so that doesn't mean this plant is not healthy. It just means it's a different plant. Next to the purple Russian, we have the Chianti Rose. And this one is also a weirdo because look at the leaves. They're so different looking from any other tomato I've ever seen. And so again, I'm just going to come in here and tap, tap, tap the flowers. And there's some more flowers back here. And this plant's looking pretty good. It's nice and happy and healthy. There's some more flowers opening up up here at the top. Give those a little tap. And yeah, basically right now all I'm doing is um, encouraging the plant to stay on the trellis, tying it up where it needs to be tied up, and getting the leaves off the ground. These two plants next to that one are called Lemon Boy. These are two plants that I bought. Um, I wasn't going to buy any tomatoes, but I did. And these things are super happy. These have been out here for almost a month, I think. Or maybe they have been out here for a month. They've been out here a while. Um, they are tied up to the trellis. They are growing well. And down here are some flowers. Give those a little tap. And I believe that these two flowers back here will turn into tomatoes. We'll see, but they look to have been pollinated. There are some more flowers coming up right here on this one. And again, I probably will end up cutting off these branches at some point. When it gets a little bit taller, I'll come out and cut those off. This one is also a lemon boy 
And as you can see, these plants are very lush. They're, they have lots of leaves. They're very happy. Um, I'm just gonna tap, tap, tap those. And down here is a little tomato. And actually, he's not really a little tomato. He's pretty big. I mean, this, you know, he's two fingers right now. And this is a yellow tomato plant. I've never grown a yellow tomato plant, so that's very exciting. Now what I see right away that I'm going to cut off is what's called a sucker. So suckers come in in between the two branches. And actually here's another one right here. So the reason I cut those off is to keep the plant growing up instead of out. So let me see, this plant, this lemon boy, this right here, is a sucker that I didn't see and it got huge. I should have come in and cut this off, but right now it's too big, so I'm just gonna leave it. But what you wanna do to increase airflow and prevent disease is try to keep those suckers down. So all I've been doing lately is coming out, looking around anytime I can. Sometimes I don't have time, I don't have a chance. But I try to come out and just look at all of the little armpits of my tomatoes and make sure there's no suckers. And if there are, I either pinch them off or I cut them off. Now, let's talk beans. There are two types of beans. There's bush beans and there's pole beans. That's kind of like tomatoes, determinate and indeterminate. So I have both types of beans planted right now. Um, I have picked one bean <laughs> off of my bush beans, which is very exciting. But let's see what the beans are doing. And then we'll move into the other trellis and see what's going on in there. So these are bush beans. There are three bush bean plants right here. Uh, this one I started inside, and so it's a little bit bigger. And then here's one that I direct sowed in the ground. And then the other one I direct sowed is right there. So what do beans look like when they grow? They look like this. That's a tiny bean. They come out of the flowers and that's what they look like and then they get bigger. Um, as you can see, this plant has some holes in it and that is from bugs. I have been trying to grow my plants as organically as possible. Um, I did not buy all organic seeds, but I am trying to keep pests down and keep everything fed as organically as possible. Over here, I have two more bush bean plants. And again, this is one I started in the house and this is one I direct sowed. So here's a bean, just a tiny bit bigger. And here's one that's even bigger. This one I could pick in the next couple days. Now, if we come down here, these, these three plants right here are pole beans. So these, at some point will grow up the trellis and I'll have beans hanging off of the trellis. So this one I started in the house and you can see it has some tiny beans on it, which is very exciting. Um, this is one that I planted, I just direct sowed out here. And this is another one I planted in the house, but it was a little smaller when I transplanted it. So it's taking its time. It's a little lighter in color, the leaves, but it looks healthy, it's growing new leaves, and so that's a very good sign. And over here are three more pole beans. This, is, this one has been in the ground the longest. Um, and it's healthy and it has beans on it right now. And these are almost ready to pick. And this one is also a transplant from inside. And this one is a direct sow. Now, you've heard me throw around the term direct sow quite a bit. What's that mean? So, there's two ways to start plants. You can start them in a seed tray or in a cup or in a little pot in your house under a grow light. That's what I did for most of the plants out here. Now, when I say I direct sowed something, that means I came outside, I dug a little bit of a hole, I put seeds in the ground, and I left them and they came up. That's what direct sowing is. You're directly sowing them into the ground. Next up is cucumbers. And I have two types of cucumbers out here. This one right here is a pickle plant. 
also, if you've ever seen a whole pickle in a jar that's been pickled, um, that's what these look like when they come off the vine. So they have a little bit of, um, they're green with a little bit of lighter green on them and sometimes they're actually prickly. Now, cucumbers grow in a fun way. They send out these little tendrils that grab on to things and they climb. So you'll see that he's grabbed on in a few spots. See, he's grabbed on down here as well. And so he will climb up this trellis. And I have a lot of flowers on here. And if you look, there is a baby cucumber right here. There he is. So this is a plant that I started inside and I transplanted out here and it's doing very well. Um, I did have to help it along at first. It was growing along the ground and it wasn't really ready to grab onto the trellis. So I tied it up, but as it grows up, I will remove that twine and it will just continue to grow all the way up the trellis. The other cucumber I have is over here and it is called burpless. And it is just a traditional cucumber, like a slicer cucumber. And it has these huge leaves. I mean, these leaves are massive. And it has started shooting, sending out these tendrils. But as you can see, I did tie it up because it was laying on the ground after all the rain we've had. And it's not quite ready to grab onto the trellis yet. So I do come out here and kind of, you know, try and help him along, wrap his tendrils around. But he'll take off and he'll grow right up. And there's a little cucumber coming up. And this is one I direct sowed. So this is just straight from the ground. I did not transplant this one. And again, he will grow up this trellis and I'll have cucumbers hanging and I'll be able to just pick them from there. Last thing I have out here is melons. I have two types of melons. I have sugar baby watermelons and I have cantaloupes. Now, you're asking me, how the heck are you gonna grow watermelons and cantaloupes on this trellis? So the watermelons I planted are only going to get about five pounds, which is perfect for vertical gardening because you don't want a 35 pound watermelon hanging from a cattle panel. Now these are heavy duty. They're made to keep cattle in, cattle are heavy. But if you hang a 35 pound watermelon from a cattle panel, it will fall off the vine and it will not keep growing. So what's the solution? One, you grow smaller fruit and two, you hold them up. So as things grow up the trellis, and as the melons start producing fruit, I will create little hammocks and I will tie them up so they stay attached to the vine and they can fully ripen before I pick them. So over here, I have my watermelons and these were both direct sowed. And this is a watermelon plant and it will vine. So I will be able to tie it up to this trellis and it will grow up. And the other one is over here. I'm doing two plants per, on each side of this trellis um, on the melon trellis. Now the beans are closer together, but the melons need to stay a little farther apart because they get huge. Over here are my cantaloupes. This is one, and these I transplanted. So this one was started in my basement and it's been moved out here. This one was also started at the same time as the other one, but as you'll see, it's much smaller. So this morning, what I did was I came out and I direct sowed some seeds right here. So hopefully those germinate and they will continue to grow up and they'll grow like this. This is what this plant should start to look like pretty soon, but this one has not grown very much at all since it's been moved out here a couple weeks ago. The last thing out here is this lettuce. This is butter crunch lettuce. And this is something that, again, that I bought as seedlings um, and it's huge. I need to come out here and cut the rest of this off because as you can see, this one is getting very tall. Um, I need to come out here, cut this down, and I'm probably going to go ahead and pull this one out. The rest of these I'm going to leave for now, but they will bolt soon and go to seed and it'll get too hot and they won't be able to make it. So that'll be the end of the lettuce. But what I can do is I can actually sow more lettuce in the fall when it cools down because lettuce is a cool weather crop. So that's all for this gar garden tour. Thank you for joining me on my first video. Um, 
leave me a comment below if you have any questions or if you see anything that you like or if you have any suggestions i'm open to anything i'm open to ideas um, new plant suggestions i'm here for it so thank you for joining me i will see you in the next one my goal is to do one of these garden tour videos every week and just kind of show you what i'm harvesting what's growing what i've done out here uh and hopefully fingers crossed i'll keep the weeds under control and it won't look like a massive mess so until the next time see ya